wait, 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 wait. Hey guys, it's Wenji. 40 degree heat hog. It's so hot, guys. Have you guys ever been stuck outside? No phone, no food, no water, no nothing. Literally been stranded. Uh, I haven't. These survival hacks may or may not save your life. And without further ado, let's get on with the video. Let's go. yourself face to face with a hungry crocodile then you're in trouble most people will turn around and run away as fast as they can but crocs are actually super quick on their feet when running in a straight line in spite of their short legs this is really surprising because they look like they got little legs and can't run kind of like mia she got little legs but she's quick Instead, what you should do is run in a zigzag pattern. Croc's legs are too short to change directions quickly and this movement will actually confuse them and might mean the difference between life and death. Oh, who could that be? Grease fires are caused by cooking oil that becomes too hot and are super dangerous. Do not try to put these out with water as that may make them even worse. Don't try and smother it with a tea towel either because the wind will make the fire bigger. And definitely don't pick up the pan. The first thing you should do is turn off the stove if you can do so safely and then cover the pot with a lid to remove the oxygen from the fire. You can also try throwing baking soda on the fire but keep in mind this only works for smaller fires. If the fire has spread too much, call for help. If you're out in the dark without light, a flashlight paired with a water jug makes a super bright lantern. Doing this provides enough light around you and frees up your hands if you need to work on something in the dark. If you're out with friends, it can also substitute as a campfire, which is great when you're at places where a bonfire is not allowed. Hey Wendy, can I borrow the scissors? Sure. Ah, why'd you do that? Oh my gosh, are you okay? We should pull it out, right? No, we can't pull it out. Never pull out sharp objects if you've been stabbed. Mm. Do not do what people do in the movies. The object itself could be the only thing stopping you from bleeding out. Instead, leave it in and call for help. Hi. Uh-huh. I've been stabbed. So this may get a bit much, but bear with me, this could save your life one day. If you're taken away and your captor uses duct tape to bind your wrists, there's a good way to get out. First, if your mouth is free, then you can chew your way through the tape. But if your mouth is also bound, then here's what you need to do. First, raise both arms above your head and then bring your arms down quickly. As you bring them down, you'll need to pull your elbows apart and past your waist on each side. The reason this works is that duct tape is incredibly strong when pulled lengthways, but it's weak when ripped horizontally. The action of jamming your elbows past your sides actually rips the duct tape from the side, which is the weakest point. Now, I know this may sound kind of morbid, but feel free to practice this at home because you don't know if you'll need it one day. <coughs> And surprisingly guys, I actually got this in my first go. I was really doubtful if I could do it. And I'm a really weak girl, so this is definitely possible. If you're driving away from civilization and you get a flat tire, you might be in serious trouble without a spare. But if you're desperate, you can actually stuff grass inside your tire to drive it to a nearby town or gas station to get help. I don't have a flat tire, so I'm gonna show you with a balloon. By literally stuffing grass inside, you'll eventually provide enough resistance to support your vehicle. It won't be pretty, but it might save your life or hours and hours of waiting till someone comes to help. If you're being robbed or attacked, don't just yell for help. Help! Help! Thief! Somebody help me! Even if people hear you, they might not feel like it's their responsibility to help you. And many studies have shown that people can get ignored even in large crowds. 
Instead, yell at a specific person for help. Like, hey you in the blue shirt. Help! You in the blue hat! Help me! The named individual feels a sense of responsibility and is more likely to help. I'm always jealous of business class when I get on a plane, but did you know that you can actually have a higher chance of survival in a plane crash if you're sitting at the back compared to the front? Another reassuring statistic whenever I fly is that the chances of being in a plane crash are way less than being hit by a bus. When going out into the wild, it's important to protect your food supplies. Belly first. If you're bringing rice or beans, you should know that the plastic packaging they come in is pretty weak. Instead, you should first transfer them into plastic bottles, which are less likely to rip. This will keep your food clean and dry. You'll thank me when you're hungry. <laughs> If you're out in the wild, even the smallest wound can be fatal if left open, leading to an infection. In a pinch, you can actually use super glue to seal the wound. It's not the best option to use, but it still works if you have nothing else. Super glue even looks quite similar to medical glue. And I actually bought both to compare to see what the difference was, and yes, they were very similar. will help you guys, you know, survive one day. And if you guys want to try these anyways, hashtag me in Wiggy Collins. I love to look at all your tags. Follow me on social media because I am there during the week. And until next week, I will miss you guys so much. Bye. Love you.